Uh, we are moving you know into the next uh, you know section of the presentation and this is now the panel session uh, where we will have panelists who will discuss you know salient issue that has to do with uh, a major development within our ecosystem and um, uh, basically they will be looking at the the central bank of nigeria digital currency the he naira and then they will also be talking about the impact and the security i know there is a challenge you know around that development uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria is trying to, you know, come up with, uh, uh, you know, a digital currency, you know, which has been uh, codenamed He Naira. Uh, and then you, 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 there has been a lot of industry perspective to, you know, uh, what prompted, the, you know, the Central Bank of Nigeria. And, uh, you know, has there been a very thorough market, you know, survey that has been done, you know, before actually trying to launch this particular product. Uh, so, you know, to, to, to help us in this section, we have, a, you know, the moderator, and the moderator is also... Uh, one of our you know national executive member you know for the cyber security exploration of nigeria uh mr olabode agbola so labode agbola is actually the director of training and awareness for the cyber security exploration of nigeria please join me to welcome um mr. labode agbola and so uh among our panelists we have uh chuta chimeze uh, who is the founder of Blockchain Nigeria, uh, user group advisor for West Africa. Uh, join me to welcome uh, Chuta. Please a round of applause for Mr. Chuta. Uh, also, uh, you know, among the panelists, in the panelists is uh, Arisi Naji, the CISO of the Federal, I mean, the First Bank of Nigeria, FBN. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure that, you know, the CISO is around. You know, CISO can have a lot of you know, work at hand. Uh, so we also, uh, you know, have among the panelists, Mr. Oluli Keo Latunji, the acting CISO of InterSwitch Group. Do we have Mr. Latunji in the house? Oh, okay. Please a round of applause for him. So maybe we want to maintain social distance. So, I mean, you have the, you have a very good uh, platform to have to do that. Uh, so thank you. I will hand over to the moderator. Uh, like I said, we are looking at the, the newly developed uh, Central Bank of Nigeria digital currency, he Naira, the, the impact and the security issue. Um, I know this is something that should interest. If you're, in, if you're in the fintech industry, this should interest you. And uh, I believe this will also generate a lot of uh, discussion, uh, you know, after the panel, you know, thought through on, on, the, on, the, on the presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Labor, please. Good morning and welcome to today's uh, session of the conference. Uh, I have been attending uh, session uh, conferences and, and I think this year own stands out and I want to give uh, appreciation to the organizing uh, committee. Please let's jump around for them, please. Yeah. So we will be discussing what is trending in Nigeria at the moment. Is Nigerian government, uh, f uh, are they actually focused? I, I mean, are they uh, actually having what it takes to align with what is happening globally? But I am surprised when uh, something equivalent to that is launched, which is e Naira, And uh, because of that, so we, we felt it's important that we talk about it. So uh, I will be welcoming uh, the panelist with me on the, on, 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 on the table here. On my uh, far left, I have Mr. Chuta Chimeze. Then I have Mr. Uh, Olukunle Olatunji. Uh, Oluleke Olatunji. Uh, from the look on their faces, I can tell you that they are loaded and uh, I'm sure they will do justice to the, to the topic at hand. So the way I would like to start is to ask Mr. Chuta to please uh, probably in a few minutes uh, explain to us what is uh, e-Naira and um, from there we'll be looking at how um, it affects individual and how we can stay safe uh, using this e-Naira. So Mr. Chita, over to you sir. Yeah, the e-Naira is um, Nigeria's um, central bank digital currency. It falls under um, the category of digital assets that are, you know, termed to be central bank issued cryptocurrencies. Okay, so what they are trying to do is to have 
a direct response to the inflow of privately issued cryptocurrencies in the world right now. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's a fact that privately issued cryptocurrencies are gradually taking control of individuals' transactions and people are continually hedging their funds with crypto assets. So the CBN and most central banks, I think about more than 80% of central banks all over the world are currently responding to that influx of privately issued crypto currencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum in order to maintain control and also um, protect their economies because privately issued cryptocurrencies, they, they function in a decentralized environment and um, typically the, the walls that separate countries are broken down. So they are borderless and also enable instant transactions. So some of these things are not very friendly to the controlling influence that um, central banks generally would like to have. And of course, governments um, pursue most of their economic um, policies through the uh, central banks that operate and manage their, their currencies. So e-Naira is, is that response. So it's going to be a digital token that is going to be tied 100% to the actual physical Naira that we have. Of course, you know that um, this has become also necessary because technology has also evolved. So we need to have the kind of um, currency, the kind of money that is much more friendly to the internet than ordinary ledger that we were using previously in traditional banking system. So that's in a nutshell what the Inara project is about. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chuta. Uh, I, I can't just uh, expect more than that. Um, I, I appreciate that you're able to give us an insight into uh, Inara. So uh, that will lead me to the next question, and I'll be directing that to Mr. Luleke. Uh, Mr. Luleke, um, so, so how do you uh, compare uh, Inara to cryptocurrency? If you don't mind, in just two minutes. Thank you. The difference between cryptocurrency and Inara are um, there are four, four categories. Um, cryptocurrency tends to give you the option of being anonymous, but the way Inera is set up, um, it's not anonymous, right? You have your bank account will be there, your details will be there. You can easily be tracked and traced. Now, for most um, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrencies, as we understand them, it works on a decentralized uh, network or blockchain. But for the in era, it's um, centralized. Everything is hosted in one place. Um, and the other part, the other difference is um, who, who tends to benefit. For cryptocurrencies, it's basically the individual. I can do what I, I can do almost anything I like without the other party knowing much about who I am, right? But for um, the in era, that is not possible. So for the in-era, it's the governments that actually benefit because they can track everything you do. They can program the, um, the in-era for various economic reasons. They can use it to transfer funds. They can use it to control the economy. They can use it to track people. They can even use it to, um, to um, um, collect taxes, right? So it's, it's, um, it's a wide range of, a wide range of uh, possibilities with, uh, with the in-era. But major, major things about it is that it's not uh, unlike, um, okay, another thing is transparency. So for cryptocurrencies, once you uh, put in a uh, Bitcoin wallet, you can see all the transactions online. But for the in-era, that won't be possible. You might really be able to see your own, uh, your own transactions. I don't know if that's... That's clear enough. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Oluleke. As we were just speaking, it also dawned on me that INARA can actually enable government to run analytics on uh, some uh, area of uh, human endeavor that actually uh, um, that actually witness some high or low volume of uh, financial movement. For instance, with INARA, if there are a lot of uh, uh, money being spent on importation of certain goods, that analytics can just be so clear, I mean, than somebody um, running it uh, with, with conventional currency. Yes, I was going to speak about that. It just kept my mind. Yeah. So, the advantage, one of the advantages of having the in era is it gives the government uh, a tool to be able to understand economic behavior. 
and respond almost immediately. Like um, my colleagues mentioned, it helps give the CBN tighter control over monetary policy. It helps them, if, 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 if it eventually becomes widespread, it, it, it makes the job of the CBN very, very easy. It makes their work easier. Aside from the fact that it's cheaper to just mint the in era, that to mint naira notes. I think um, for a six year period, the amount of money that was spent on um, printing the naira was 281 billion. Between 2013 and 2018, if I can remember correctly. So with the in-era, instead of shelling out that amount of money, you can use that money to do something else and just mint um, mint loans. Thank you very much. Mr. Harrison, please, uh, I would like to welcome you to this panel. So, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Harrison, now that you are here, so I want to find, I want to assume that you are going to be the best to answer the ne this next question. The question is this, uh, uh, are you... Um, how are we sure that uh, CBN is not indirectly becoming a commercial bank because uh, they are going to sit on the driver's seat of this e-Naira, uh, unlike when commercial banks are the one uh, in, uh, controlling the uh, conventional currency. So please, we do want to speak to that. Okay, uh, can you confirm I can be heard? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. We can see your face as well. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm the, you know, I, I work for a bank and CBN is my regulator, okay? So I'm not sure you want to ask me a question whether CBN wants to become a bank or not, okay? But I will, I will it will be good to clear that um, if the e era is a, in its evolving stage, so if you look at what bank used to be more than a hundred years ago or what cbn rules had was uh, was prior to now you will understand that as the project involves there will be a lot of development and there will be a lot of maturity and as that happens you will see some level of changes in current uh, structure i do not think that cbn is proposing to become a bank because then you understand that that is not technically possible yeah but as the uh, the inara project involved i'm sure that you we will all witness a lot of maturity in how things uh, we involve uh, with respect to the issuing and acquiring of the inara so permit me to, so this is just my own uh, input from the different conversation that I have participated in. But I do not see the CBN a, a commercial bank. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison um, I, I, I share your sentiment. You, know, you don't want to actually shoot yourself on the foot, no problem. <laughs> so uh, I'll be asking, asking it, uh, this next question and I want Mr. Chita to please uh, do justice to that. So the question is, um, uh, Mr. Chita, are you able to explain the security architecture that this era will run on? We know that uh, for cryptocurrency, it runs on blockchain. So are you able to also speak to that? Is it the same architecture or is it different thing entirely? Okay, there are different kinds of uh, blockchain and um, at least you could mention at least four of such types. You have the public blockchain in which um, it's permissionless and people are able to participate from anywhere in the world as long as they have the required hardware and they don't need the permission of any entity to do that. You also have the private blockchains, which is usually um, a blockchain infrastructure that is deployed by a private entity and organization, and they manage their information. And if you're not permitted by that um, organization, you cannot participate in the, in the network. They also have the hybrid type in which case you take the best of the public blockchain and you take the best of private blockchain and you merge them together and you appoint 
known validators and operators to function within that uh, network. Then you also have the 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 last part, which is the the consortium, in which case you have different organizations who come together to form the network. I don't know if you you guys remember a couple of years ago when Facebook was proposing to set up a blockchain network. What they were trying to do was to create a consortium type of blockchain. Now the 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 Enera project is expected to run on top of a hyperledger um, fabric blockchain infrastructure, which is actually a private blockchain infrastructure. In other words, the the entire structure infrastructure of that project will be under the control of the central bank. And except they choose to appoint um, node validators within their control, they will have the sole responsibility of managing and maintaining that network. Now, the, the, the way Hyper Ledger Fabric was designed is that it's a modular platform. In other words, you could um, plug in whatever you need to um, operate within your, your infrastructure. So it's designed, first of all, to be a, a transactional network. In other words, you could facilitate transaction on a P2P level between one holder of a wallet and another person who also holds up. So that can be done in terms of transaction. But it also has modus. In other words, they have thought about some other use cases that you may consider and you can actually add those modus or enable those modus to also work. For instance, you can add an ID chain. You can add, add um, things like supply chain management. You can add things like uh, tax uh, management. All those things can all be embedded into that network. But you could just start as a transactional network and operate that until when you need the other ones to add to it. So it's designed to be a proprietary tool and it is 100% permissioned. So if you are not authorized, you will not have access to it. So I think that is the, the, the type of um, security infrastructure that CBN is proposing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chuta. So uh, that's fine. At, at least uh, some of us today might have learned one or two things about different type of uh, blockchain. That's brilliant. Uh, so, okay, now I want to go to the questions that uh, deal with the security of Inaira, and I will be expecting Mr. Luleke to uh, do justice to that. So the question is this. Uh, Mr. Luleke, uh, as we begin to adopt, uh, as we begin to... No, as we begin to adopt uh, in Naira, uh, do we emphasize, uh, first of all, uh, one of the, um, one of the um, um, security incidences that has bedeviled cryptocurrency is actually coming from the angle of uh, social engineering, which uh, I call hacking of the mind. So, uh, and I want to think as well that in Naira might also uh, be uh, might also be exposed to that as well. So, Mr. Luleke, do you want to agree that we should we should emphasize an increase in social engineering as we begin to adopt in Naira? Yes, that's expected. Um, anything involving money and humans, there's always some form of um, social engineering. Every, there are people that believe to take advantage of systems. As we live to protect systems, there are those our brethren on the other side. <laughs> It's like the world is yin yang, black and white, right? So, um, yes, there are people that they are actively, as it is now, they actually, as we are defining, thinking of strategies to protect users, they are thinking of strategies to defraud them. The, before internet banking came in, we had ATM cards um, that didn't use chip and pin. People found how to clone those kind of cards. We brought up chip and pin. People now came up with phishing emails where you put in your card, your pain, and all that. So this inner is not going to be different. Um, as people begin to register, you might be getting um, phishing emails. You, know, you might be getting same way um, internet banking transfer frauds work. You might get a phone call saying, "Okay, um, we are trying to do some changes on your wallet or something." You get we are, we are calling from the CBN. They will say they are coming from, calling from the CBN. You give them your token, they take over your wallet. So things like that are, is def are definitely going to happen. It's not, um, it's not avoidable. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Aluleke. Uh, my next question will go to Mr. Harrison. Um, CBN claimed that uh, people in diaspora will benefit um, uh, more uh, by the time this INARA is uh, adopted. And one of the reasons uh, put uh, on, the, on, the, on the social, sorry, on the public domain was that uh, remittances will become, uh, remittances and claim will become cheaper and, uh, um, than the conventional international money transfer. So Mr. Harrison, do you also agree that the uh, adoption of e-Naira will make international remittances uh, uh, cheaper and easier as compared to the conventional international money transfer? E-Naira projects that have the potential to make remittances easier and um, also puts uh, cost control in such a way that it's transparent and manageable and can be minimized. So um, the reality, if you look at the, the entire project in its form, and this will even become far better as other jurisdictions begin to adopt the e-currency scheme. So yes, the, the project we, we give that first is if you look at what is the cost, because at the end of the day, you're looking at the cost to value. And the e project offers a cheaper way to generate uh, the current Nigerian currency and distribute and manage it. So remittances will be easier. And um, again, also gives control to consumers. It gives control to consumers. And as, like I said, as other currencies also, uh, tradition starts to adopt the e Naira project, I mean the, the e-currency project, then you will find situations where you are able to do direct translation and direct purchases and direct transfers instead of moving across multiple currencies, which is where the cost of transfer goes up. So yes, it has that uh, high potential to make remittances cheaper and easier. Thank you, Mr. Arizin. So, uh, Mr. Chuta, uh, this is going to be my last question, uh, except if uh, people um, on the floor want to ask. Uh, now, we've seen that uh, remittances uh, for people uh, in diaspora will become easy, uh, will, be, will become easier and cheaper. So, what security concern do you think we should be bothered about for people who want to adopt INERA locally and those who want to adopt uh, internationally as well? Okay, thank you so much. Um, the moment uh, the CBN introduced INAIRA, I, I was a little bit concerned because um, we we know how public servants and public services, how well they are able to do their job. And when it comes to data protection, we also know how well they, they do things like that. So I quickly identified three key areas that we need to um, focus on in terms of security. One, is the um, user data management because the in Naira infrastructure is going to be completely um, KYC for each users, and you know people will be interested. Sorry, sorry please. Do you want to? Ask? I know KYC. No, do you want to explain what KYC is, please? <laughs> okay, okay. KYC. I mean, um, know your customer. Brilliant. Okay, yes. so so um, there is no participant. You can't. You can own an e -Naira wallet except first of all your bvn is linked to that your your wallet and of course everything that should be known about you should also um, go with that your wallet and that automatically becomes one of the key targets that some of the adversarial attacks might be aiming secondly we also have to look at um loss of funds to on the user level because uh, electronic transactions are, are not something that um, it's easy to understand for people who are not at least up to some level of knowledge in technology. So you find a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. So in, in, in most of the, the loss of funds that people have experienced in transacting with cryptocurrencies or electronic money is usually on the user end because they don't understand and, and, and the CBN needed to or still needs to go ahead with uh, mass uh, education so that people will be able to uh, manage their data. Uh, it's a good thing that they also have tiers 
of an amount that you are permitted to transact or have in your wallet at the rollout state. But as people are allowed to have more money in, in RF form, then they are prone to lose such at any slight mistake. But of course, it's possible to um, have reversal of transactions because since the network is such that it's permissioned and um, the users are known, it's also possible to have reversal of transaction on the back then that's the support thing then on the other side you also have the the third one that also is worrisome which is um denial of service because as a network um adversarial attack can say okay let's deny this guy's service um, last two weeks or so there's a public network known as uh, solana and solana had up to 24 hours more than 24 hours um downtime and what happened there was that um there was a multiple um, barrage of transactions sent out by bots on the network. And those transactions kept on submitting um, requests for uh, authentication and validation until they weakened the network and dragged the network down. And of course, the community had to go down and have to spend time to obtain 80% consensus guardian before they could restart the network. Now, someone can say okay let's give this cbn uh, in error some something to think about and decide to do so it, they have to from the onset start thinking about all these attacks because the the new economy the, the internet of money will be much more difficult for us to ignore the security implications because nations are going to be putting their vital assets on the network and i mean cyber war will become much more meaningful to government because before now they didn't understand what but now you have your money in the network then you stand a chance of losing a large chunk of it if you don't do the needful thank right. you very much mr tutor uh, okay. mr Oluleke, uh do you want to speak to that uh, concern that people should have as well uh he has said a, a lot but i think we still have a chance of learning more Yes, I was going to request your permission to add to what he said. And um, I have two major concerns. Uh, one of them has to do with um, the security infrastructure around what the CBN is doing. Now, when you have, for example, all of us know about Las Vegas, right? Now, Las Vegas is a, is a, is a gambling hub in the US. Now, what happens is there are nights where, I don't know who has watched Ocean's 11 or Ocean's 12, the movie. But basically, a group of guys decided to rob a casino um, on a particular day. Why they chose that day was because all the money from all the casinos around were dumped in that place. So there's no point robbing all of them. You just go to where it, where, where it has been dumped, rob the place, and you have access to everything. So if you look at um, what the CBN is trying to do, it's a fantastic initiative. But we must also be careful to make sure we have relevant protections in place. Because if, if that infrastructure is hacked, if, if there's unauthorized access into it, it exposes a lot of things. And what that means is, before now, there's really no motivation. You can't attack all the 25 or 30 banks at once, right? But it, once you have everything collated in one place, there's a motivation to do that. And people with significant resources can commit their resources to doing that because the benefit and the outcome is higher, right? So for me, that is that is a major concern. The... the, the um, the threat landscape around um, um, money management and finance in Nigeria, in era is going to change it. Because before now, you can't hack all the banks. But now, if everything is in one place, external threat actors, maybe from North Korea and all those other places, will begin to take interest in, uh, in our economy. That's one. Secondly, um, there's something called quantum computing. Now, cryptography is based on the fact that there are no machines available that can crack certain uh, algorithms. But with quantum computing, um, that would be possible. It's not going to happen now. It may not happen in the next 10 years, but it's something to have in mind. So if quantum computing comes up, it will just invalid it will probably invalidate um, all these cryptocurrencies that we have. Except, of course, you can find a way to make it um, safe, safe from that. 
Those Thank are my you very much, Mr. Aruleke. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, when Mr. Chuta was speaking on uh, cyber warfare, so I was also thinking alongside. So, and I want to ask uh, Mr. Harrison to also speak to these. Uh, uh, do you think that at this point, Nigeria, I, I want to also say that uh, by virtue of uh, some opportunities I had some times past, I'm able to understand that Nigeria has a different set of army called Cyber Warfare Command. They are based in Abuja and they are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that Nigeria is secured uh, um, digitally. But their focus has always been on critical assets such as uh, in the data control system. So at this point, so I want to ask Mr. Uh, Harrison, still on the issue of what concerns should we have that is, is, is as, uh, do you want to advise central bank to uh, synergize with uh, cyber warfare command and probably other relative agencies to ensure that from external threat actor uh, this our centralized uh, infrastructure for I, I know running on um, running on um, on um, uh, blockchain also means it's decentralized but at the, at the same time too the control is domiciled in one organization so i want to f speak to these to f uh, educate us if the nigerian uh, cbn and the cyber warfare command to synergize to ensure that a threat actor that are state actors will not take advantage of this uh, centralized uh, infrastructure and launch attack that can cripple nigeria economy thank you mr uh Arison. when we, when, we, when we listen to you Okay, so um, let me let me say first that I'm aware. Uh, sorry, I'm aware that not just on this project, in a number of other projects, as CBN is um, collaborating. They're into a lot of collaboration, not just with the with the command center in Abuja, but with even committee of CISOs and a number of other security organizations. The reality is this, if we, we cannot rule out that with anything digital, you are, exposed, you are exposed to cyber criminality. That's that's a fact. Another fact remains that this will not be the first time that you have um, uh, an operation that cuts across different banks. If you look at roles that InterSwitch, UPSL, and needs are playing today, you will find out that have roles that cut across multiple banks, almost all the banks, okay? So the focus will be more on what needs to be done so that you can understand the threats, the TTPs, the techniques, and then the actions that needs to be taken so that at worst case scenario, you are at par with the cuts that you face. So we want to have the floor uh, have the opportunity now to ask questions. So if you got any questions, so we wanted to just uh, signify so that you can be given the mic. So I've got two hands up. So the first uh, person is the one in, uh, in uh, the sorry, in sir, uh, Maybe you just allow me to, uh, you know, uh, quickly get on that. I will appreciate that. I, I'm, I'm quite, uh, you know, I know we're all curious about this and we all have questions. Even me, as the moderator, I also have question. So maybe I'm using my, you know, my, my privilege to, you know, take the questions first, then I will allow the floor to also have their question. So please uh, allow me to ask my question Why I, I give the, you know, the audience the opportunity to also ask their question. That's very too cool. I, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, I've been very much concerned about this development and I've been following it so much with close interest. And I have the, I would have loved Mr. Addison to say, I would have wanted to direct these questions to him, but I believe my, you know, panelists here will also be able to, uh, you know, make a point on, on this. Uh, the adoption of Inaira, uh, from what I've understand, uh, CBN, you know, announced that uh, Inaira will be linked with the, uh, with the fiat currency. That, that's, that's one understanding that I've been able to, you know, have about, you know, the implementation program. Uh, so, one is, in case Inaira inherits our Inaira volatility, you know, Naira can be very volatile. So if, in case, you know, because of the implementation linking to our fiat currency, in case in here is our Naira volatility, what will be much advantage of the Hina Naira? That's, that's the one question. Then the second question is, uh, maybe I, I would like you to, you know, to answer this. Uh, how would, uh, you know, players in the blockchain 
uh, you know, technology industry accepts this as alternative digital currency. You know, and uh, the last question is, uh, you know, maybe you, know, you can also help me, you know, attend to this. Uh, globally, Nigeria is ranked among, you know, among the sevens on the bank nation, on bank nation. Uh, so now we are actually rolling out the technology. And you agree with me that, you know, why we are among the seven on bank nation is that a lot of people who are underbanked it's as a result of lack of financial literacy. You know, they don't have financial literacy. So now we are going to, you know, we are, we are, we are not been able to, you know, resolve the issue around our underbank, you know, the, the, the large numbers of underbank. And now we are talking about inner. So how will this help resolve the underbank challenge that we have in, in the country? Okay, thank you. I will take the first, the second, and uh, speak a little bit on the last one. Okay, so the, the first one is uh, if the e naira is going in any way um, be immune to the free fall that the naira is known for, okay? Uh, th there's no such thing because it's the same currency, okay? It's only that this one is an electronic token on a wallet, what causes currencies to appreciate in value or depreciate is the productivity of the jurisdiction that owns that currency. I mean, if we, if we keep borrowing, we keep importing, if we keep you know, outsourcing everything that we need to do, the Naira will continue to go down. And there's nothing, there's no amount of CBDC that can reverse that. Okay, so um that's that for that one then uh, most people who play in the blockchain and crypto space they keep asking will it be possible to have the e naira listed on exchanges and the, the, the obvious answer is no because this is not cryptocurrency and you can't have them listed on um, decentralized exchanges like binance or kucoin or thereabout so you you there's no um expectation of in interaction that endears people to um, hold assets that are listed on exchanges because assets that are on exchanges are speculative. You can't speculate the inner era. I mean, for all good purposes, there's no basis to speculate um, Naira. Okay, so it will not have an interaction. But I believe that somewhere along the line, innovation and innovators will be able to figure out a way that it could create um, an entry point through the e naira to the crypto world for maybe let's say startup school pick up an idea like this okay you have a wallet service and you have an e naira wallet also in that um service so you could enable user to unbundle uh e naira into their wallet and with it they can buy crypto so it's possible so that will be an area for innovators to play around then on the, the, the last um, aspect, which is um, uh, enabling um, financial transactions to the last mile and banking your bank, that is not the job of the CBN. What, what brings people into banking system and getting people to have access to these things are technology. So if, if technology companies don't find any value in extending their networks to remote places where people can have access to mobile phones and the technologies that enable them to use this in area then they, there's no way in area is not a network on its own it will have to transport itself on the network that already exists i would answer that thank you any input from uh you know uh but i think i'm i'm, I'm gladly i'm quite uh, i'm quite satisfied with your response yeah so i mean you are you are able to actually address one particular Especially the area of broadband penetration, when you have, you know, people are not able to actually, you know, have internet to able to even get, you know, the normal conventional banking that we are talking about, rather than looking at here. So thank you. So from the audience, um, sorry, let me know the number. I mean, we might be able just to take three, and uh, so let's let's know those who are interested in asking questions. We, we have three already. So so just the three up. Uh, panelist. Uh, I am Venkat from Intelligence. Just coming? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my question is: uh, Naira, is it interchangeable with across the globe, or did you hear me? Sorry, did you? Hear? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Do you, do you want to answer that, or Mr. Chuta? 
Okay. Um, uh, he's asking if Inara is um, going to be um, exchangeable to other currencies or is it restricted to Naira, right? Now, a few countries. You, you, know, you know, the thing, these things are networks. And as different countries begin to build their own infrastructure, um, there will be connectivity for people who want to interconnect with some other central banks issued currency and that uh, so we have to look at it on the short term and on the long term on the short term probably none exists now for that connectivity but on the long term it's extremely necessary and possible because why build um cbdc's that are also be in silos like the monetary systems already are in silos so the if we are enabled we're able to interconnect different countries from probably um if you're if the central bank of ghana is building their own cbdc and they launch there could be a middleware that could make it easy to move funds between uh, uh naira, C, uh naira and cities okay the same with france and all that so it's something that could happen in the long run because this technology and it's very easy to build stuff like that i wanted to say before that since even the, the conventional currency that is cbd is, uh, sorry blue the change who handles the currency exchange so I, i'm thinking that technology will emerge soon where there will be a kind of api in most uh, um, fintech platform where you can actually convert your e naira to e dollar or to e pounds so we are going to see a lot in the in the few coming years thank you very much next question please yeah good afternoon sorry yes good afternoon everyone my name is peter with Asako software and uh, i had three questions but one of them I was already answered and now i have the two dumb questions left if you if you if you'd be pleased to indulge me so my first question is um what is the I, I know you've touched on it but from a layman's perspective what is the difference the essential difference between the e-naira and the naira uh, especially as uh, today, most of our money is already electronic anyway, in the sense that um, I, I hardly see cash these days, except I'm going to the market to buy, I don't know, mangoes or vegetables, you know, that kind of thing. So what, what, what is the essential difference? Then secondly, um, what it seems like the benefits of the e-Naira favor the government more, like uh, a couple of the benefits that... Um, I think Mr. Leakey mentioned uh, that it saves the government money printing physical naira, and then there's better control and all of that. So, what's what's the benefits? I know you guys don't work for the CBN, but what what's, what would be like the perceived benefits for the man on the street like me? Okay, um, I'll attempt to answer both questions, and um, if I if I don't answer them properly, my chairman Chuka would uh, correct me. So I'll start from the second one. One of the major advantages for using the in era is reduction in transaction costs. Currently, if you are doing transfers with your um, commercial banks, um, there are costs from, from moving money from Access Bank to GTB to Zenith, there are transaction costs involved. With the in era, it's peer to peer. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether or not you have a bank account somewhere else, right? So um, that's one of the major things, reduce them transaction costs. Um, your other question, the CBDC is like a digital Naira. It doesn't yield interest. It doesn't get in, it doesn't, um, there's no value, there's no value on the 200 Naira note you have in your pocket. If you keep 200 Naira notes in your pocket from now for the next 2000 years, it's still going to be 200 Naira. It's the same thing with the e Naira in the wallet. If it's there, it's just there. It doesn't yield. It's not, it's not a savings account. It's not a current account. It's just, um, a digital version of the money that you have now if you wanted to yield interest you probably have to move it to the commercial banks that will now invest it give you your interest and all that which is why um um which answers that other question you asked about whether the cbn is going to become a commercial bank the cbn is not it's not going to become a commercial bank because the role of the com commercial bank is financial intermediation you take from people that have don't have make a spread give them an interest and make your money right so um it's, it's, it, it's a concept all of us are still trying to understand better, but the best way I can explain it is that it's just like you have your 200 naira, but it's it's electronic, right? If you hold it from now till 
tomorrow, next tomorrow, it doesn't change. Um, inflation will come. What 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 you can use your digital naira to buy for two hundred naira now? You'll probably not be able to use to buy for two hundred naira in five years time. But it doesn't change the fact that it is two hundred naira. You get so I hope I've been able to provide some clarity. Um, thank you. I'm Mubarak Emi from Trilogy. Um, well, most of the questions been asked has covered most of my interests. But uh, the last quick two questions I have is uh, the first concerning the issue of speed. How fast is the transaction on the Inera protocol? Because we believe that uh, eth um, Ethereum, it's 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 a uh, it's kind of updates its speed when it compared to that of blockchain. Blockchain was only seven transactions per second, and then that of Ethereum was a thousand transactions per second. So how fast is the is that of is that of Inera? And secondly, um, is there some quant the quantity of tokens that that has been deployed on the on the Inera platform? We know that of let's see. The first protocol that's the Bitcoin being um, deployed on the blockchain. It they, they just deployed 21, uh, 21 million of, of that, and then it has been mined to like 18 million. So, since I, I had like um, the inner is not having maybe um, miners or there are only there are just some kind of nodes that have been operated inside the CBN. So, is there any particular um, inner that are, that have been deployed which are going to be mined some particular nodes or something like that? Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Harrison, if you're on, if you're on this call, if you're back on this call, do you want to answer the question, please? I, I think there a lot of um, where we run, um, but the Inara, we run on the blockchain, but the Inara is not cryptocurrency. I think I joined this call when that clarification was being provided, and a number of um, a number of uh, examples were given to show why so the anonymity that defines cryptocurrency is different from in uh, which is a digital version of your cash so if i give you 500 naira and i give you 500 e naira i have given you almost an equivalent it's equivalent okay so first of all is to the question is how fast will it be uh, today even on the on the normal transaction using the uh, across the digital channels you will find out that we have instant payments with inner to be faster because that's a mediation that when it's issuing and acquiring and the Rule. So that uh, settlement becomes easier and on the fly. So I would say, I will make the game that this is a, a project that is still in its implementation phase and just getting ready to be released. So some of the analytics will be done. So you can take samples and make analytics, then you'll be able to make some um, statements. So, but is still in implementation phase but what i know is that it's going to be fast enough to power transactions if you compare it with what is obtainable today yeah but always try to separate the inner from cryptocurrency even though both runs on the blockchain so that that will be the beginning of the the understanding so it, it will be fast enough the kind of transaction remember that had been but in terms of when you compare with ethanol you will realize that that is a post implementation analysis not prior and if it's available today it will be available within the project team is there any i think there was another question you wanted me to... i think i think you've answered the two questions yes yeah, so because it is coming from the mindset that uh, cryptocurrency are mine, but you've explained that uh, the value of uh, no. the naira that you have is equal to naira, and then no, no. So, if for instance Nigeria has uh, three trillion in circulation, and we have e naira, we can assume that we also have three trillion in circulation. We don't expect to mine anything in future because it's just a digital version of conventional naira. Am I correct, Mr. Yeah. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. That's that's what it is. Add more 
So the conversation around cyber security, around the ENR and the phishing and other things. The reality is that just like every other digital product, you expect, uh, I tell people that when any product goes live, the first customer is a cyber criminal, not necessarily the, the good guy. So you just expect people to be in war rooms now, engineering what are the possibility to exploit the knowledge. That knowledge gap, or what I call the, that knowledge uh, uh, black hole between the user community. People will, the cyber criminals will want to cash in into that window to be able to provide alternate information that will lead to fraud. So awareness and knowledge is part of what has to be continuously. And as each bank gets onboarded, they need to also continue to up because the more people know, the more they're able to act. Not necessarily that knowledge is enough because I usually will say if knowledge is enough, nobody will be smoking cigarettes. But knowledge is just one part of it, and you may want to to help guide and protect the customers that may be transacting on in era prom from your own bank's interface. But expect it to go up. Expect um, early casualties, no matter the level of knowledge. But that being a, even in understanding or detecting the pattern of, of threats or crimes, CBN and the banks to take more proactive and more corrective action in um, uh, cyber uh, in, in, uh, criminal, the activities of cyber criminals. The difference with when you can have inventories, you can have records, you can have. But then, because there's that cap capability to be able to transfer back to cash, then you have that gap also expanded. So yes, it will contribute. It will not be drastically different from what you have today. So it just for um, the, the CBN and the, 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 the contributing or the uh, collaborating banks to understand the, the, and evaluate the kind of threats additional threat can be onboarded and then take some actions, take the necessary actions to continue to take, uh, to implement policies, governance and technologies to stem um, associated threats. So I just wanted to, to cap that in, uh, I was cut off when I was speaking earlier. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think at this point, I want to, another question? Uh, I'm sorry, I've just been told that we've actually exhausted our time. Probably we can meet the panelists one on one and we, we can share your question. I, I'm sure they will do justice to that. So, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Chuta, Mr. Harrison, and Mr. Luleke. So, before you go, there will be uh, a kind of presentation of, uh, of our token of appreciation. So, uh, I will leave that to the MC to, to handle the proceeding thank you thank you so much i mean this is quite also engaging and quite exciting uh thank you to our panelists for your knowledge uh we believe i mean the the development as regards to cbdc it's an ongoing discussion and we hope to see the value and how it can actually you know uh become a financial deep and financial inclusion for for our country uh, so to to help us present the award to our panelists uh, I would like to invite the representative of the Bank of Industry, Alamanda, to help us present the award to our panelists. Please, round of applause for Alamanda. Thank you for this opportunity to present this award to Mr. Harrison. Not with us here, but I don't know if there's a representative to. Oh, okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Harrison, for, for your time, for sparing the time to educate us on the inner, its impact, and the security. Um, okay, Mr. Rotimi wants to receive your award on your behalf. Thank you so much, sir.
Um, this one goes to Mr. Oluleke. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Um, we really learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last one goes to Mr. Chuta. Thank you so much, Mr. Chuta, for your time. Thank you so much.